Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I have come with the topic approach to sync up in emergency department, which is a very important topic where one must know how to evaluate for syncopes and come to the diagnosis and treat accordingly. So let's start. So today we'll be discussing about syncope definition, pathophysiology and causes, history, physical examination, diagnostic evaluation, approach to diagnosis, how to stratify it and patient disposition. So syncope is one of the diagnostic challenge to the emergency physician. It is a common condition presenting to emergency department, which accounts to 0.6 to 3% of emergency department visits. It is defined as a transient loss of consciousness due to cerebral hypoperfusion characterized by a rapid onset short duration and a spontaneous complete recovery. So this is syncope. So let's see how it occurs and what are its causes further. So coming to pathophysiology, syncope mainly can be classified into three groups as reflex mediated, orthostatic and cardiac syncope. This classification centers around cerebral hypoperfusion due to low blood pressure mechanism that results in fall in both cardiac output and peripheral resistance causes syncope. Main cause of low peripheral resistance are decreased reflex activity and functional and structural impairment of autonomic nervous system. Decreased reflex activity leads to vasodilatation. ANS impairment works mainly when patient gets to an upright position from a sitting or a supine position causing insufficient vasoconstriction. Decreased cardiac output can be due to reasons like can be due to structural heart disease or arrhythmia related. In arrhythmia, it can be due to either bradycardia or tachycardia. Bradycardia wherein sinus node dysfunction or AV node conduction system disease. Tachycardia can be due to supraventricular, ventricular or inherited arrhythmia syndromes or primary electrical disorders. Under reflex syncope and orthostatic syncope, the most common form is the vasovagal syncope which is mediated by stress, fear, pain, any noxious stimuli. Next is the situational syncope, which is associated with a specific action such as coughing, laughing, swallowing, micturation or defecation. The third one is carotid sinus syndrome, wherein it is associated with carotid sinus hypersensitivity. This reflex mediated syncope is the most common type of syncope, accounting for 45%. Next common is the cardiac syncope which accounts for 20% and the last one wherein orthostatic syncope it accounts for just 10%. It is typically characterized by posteriorly induced hypotension most often due to impaired increase in systemic vascular resistance wherein it is due to volume depletion either due to hemorrhage, dehydration, diarrhea and vomiting. It can be caused due to drugs that can cause low blood pressure due to vasodilation or diuresis. It can be due, due to dysfunction of ANS that is in case of Parkinson's and diabetes mellitus or can be due to environmental triggers like heat stroke. Next coming to history and physical characteristics, how do we identify each of this? The important point to keep in mind while assessing a patient with syncope is the duration of episodes frequency of episodes, existence of any triggers, position in which syncope had occurred, any accompanying symptoms, patient's medical history or any history of any inherited cardiac or neurovascular disorders in the family or use of any prescribed drugs. Uh, so let's discuss each of these points. Coming to the precipitating factors which one must be able to ask while evaluating a patient with syncope where we must ask for activities such as coughing, defecation, eating, laughing, urination prior to the episode, any emotional distress, fear, pain, prolonged standing or crowded area. So these factors may be seen in case of neurally mediated syncope. Next coming to exertion, history of exertion is in important as it may indicate cardiac syncope. History of shaving or tight collar cloth is important as it indicates carotid sinus hypersensitivity. Next, history of hand or upper extremity exercise, which indicates subclavian steel syndrome. History of standing after prolonged sitting is important. Medication use, such as antiarrhythmics, which can cause cardiac syncope, antihypertensives, 
which can cause orthostatic syncope and cardiac syncope and other drugs like microlides antiemetics antipsychotics and tca which can cause cardiac syncope so these are the precipitating factors which one must keep in mind next coming to the pre existing diseases which can add on to syncope is alcohol diabetes mellitus and parkinson's disease which can cause orthostatic hypotension history of heart disease is important either arrhythmias or structural heart disease which can predispose to cardiac syncope renal replacement therapy which can lead to orthostatic hypotension older age with dementia can have psychogenic syncope history of frequent and prolonged syncopal events which indicates psychogenic syncope along with history of any psychiatric illness family history of sudden cardiac death is very important which can add on to cardiac syncope next coming to the prodromal factors which must be asked while evaluating the type of syncope abdominal pain diaphoresis nausea which indicates reflex mediated syncope aura must be asked for as it helps in differentiating between syncope and a seizure blurred vision dizziness lightheadedness must be asked as it is associated with reflex mediated syncope and orthostatic syncope chest pain dyspnea and palpitation indicates cardiac syncope tonic clonic movement or posturing must be asked as it can be differentiated from seizure position before syncope is also important which helps in the diagnosis whether syncope has occurred during or after exercise during the exercise raises the suspicion for cardiac syncope whereas after the exercise can be a benign situation during or after urination defecation sneezing or coughing indicates situational syncope syncope after standing for a long time can be most probably a benign condition syncope triggered by emotional stress can be mostly psychogenic next coming to the physical examination while evaluating syncope first is taking a complete vital sign is important including the heart rate wherein we have to see for tachycardia bradycardia looking for bp thoroughly looking for saturation to rule out hypoxia and even check for temperature supine and standing bp measurement must be taken to verify for the presence of orthostatic hypotension a drop in systolic or diastolic blood pressure of at least 20 in systolic and 10 of diastolic or systolic blood pressure drop below 90 mm of mercury while standing indicates orthostatic hypotension so this is very important next one must be able to look for carotid bruise to rule out a transient ischemic attack which can be an indicator for stroke one must be able to look for signs of dehydration and anemia to rule out orthostatic hypotension we have to do a complete head to toe examination to look for evidence of any trauma in cardiac examination one must be able to look for rubs gallops murmurs and signs of congestive heart failure and even look for sign of pneumothorax per abdomen examination is important uh, to rule out a tender pulsatile mass which indicates abdominal aortic aneurysm rupture and uh, rectal examination is warranted for the presence of hematuresia and melena as they could be the reason for syncope next coming to carotid sinus massage esc guideline recommends that any patient older than 40 years with syncope of unknown origin compatible with the reflex mechanism receive carotid sinus massage carotid sinus hypersensitivity is defined as a ventricular pause lasting more than 3 seconds or a fall in systolic bp more than 50 mm hg observed during carotid sinus massage and we have to do a complete cns examination to look for focal neurological deficit 